This video was made in collaboration with the Avatar Wiki. If you'd like to learn more, check out the link in the description. Welcome to the Imagi. Today's video is about one of Aang's closest friends and his airbending master, Monk Gyatso. Even though we know what happens with him, reliving these memories is probably going to tug at all our heartstrings, so we recommend to sit back and relax. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Gyatso grew up at the Southern Air Temple, living amongst his peers as an air nomad and being taught the air nomad's culture, as well as airbending, taking lessons in how to use the glider, for example. It was there that he later met young Avatar Roku, with whom he eventually became friends, as they both underwent years of training together. Despite training alongside the Avatar, Gyatso did not miss out on opportunities of showcasing his own airbending skills, nor did he treat the Fire Avatar any differently regardless of his Avatar status. After Roku left a couple of years later to continue his Avatar journey to the Northern Water Tribe, Gyatso too continued his training, eventually being anointed as an airbending master and receiving his tattoos. He was later promoted to be one of the five head monks at the Southern Air Temple, though that didn't mean he lost his sense of humor. At some point, Gyatso also befriended a younger guru, Pothic, which the latter would later tell Aang about. It's unknown whether or not Gyatso and Roku ever met again, but while we can assume how heartbroken Gyatso must have felt upon learning of his friend's death, we do know what followed next. While Gyatso lost an old friend, he gained a new one in Roku's next incarnation, Aang. After the young air nomad was taken in by the elders at the Southern Air Temple, Gyatso became his guardian and developed a strong bond with the boy. Together, they regularly attended Yang Chen's festival, after which Gyatso would take his pupils to an island off the coast to teach them how to fly cranefish kites. Due to this, Aang always missed the tales the Air Nomad elders used to tell. Though Gyatso assured the young avatar that he would have plenty of time to learn the Air Nomad history later in his life. Twelve years after Roku's death, Gyatso was present with the rest of the Council of Elders when Aang's identity as the new avatar was revealed. Despite this, Gyatso held the strong belief that the boy be raised just like any other child, wanting to take the pressure off his mentee. To this end, he refused to accelerate Aang's airbending training, instead playing games with him, much to the chagrin of the other elders who saw no alternative except break up the duo by sending Aang off to the Eastern Air Temple, where nuns resided, so he could focus on his training. Unbeknownst to Gyatso, Aang was eavesdropping on that conversation, upon which he decided to run away, not wanting to confront his destiny. In a tragic sense of irony, Aang never learned of Gyatso's likewise resistance to the decision by the elders. In the night of a storm, Gyatso wanted to tell his friend about the news, only to find an empty room with a lonely scroll entailing what would be Aang's last words to Gyatso, informing him about his escape. Following the events, the Fire Nation would later coordinate an attack on the Air Temples just like the Elders had predicted. Using the powers of the Great Comet, Fire Lord Sozin decimated the population of the Air Nomads, essentially wiping them out. Despite his good-natured personality, it appears that Gyatso put up quite a fight managing to subdue a large number of Fire Nation soldiers. However, not even he could stand his ground for too long, as he too eventually fell. His corpse would later be discovered by Aang amongst those of the other fallen victims, resting atop of them, fueling Aang's rage and triggering the Avatar State, which almost threatened to destroy the Air Temple. Thanks to his friends Sokka and Katara, however, he was able to come to his senses again and was confronted with the realization of being the last airbender left of his people. A wooden statue of Monk Gyatso was placed in the courtyard of the Southern Air Temple before the entrance of the hallway that led to the Air Temple Sanctuary, celebrating his airbending prowess. When Aang was trying to open his chakras, he needed to release all his grief in order to open the air chakra located in his heart. When Aang laid out all his grief in front of him, all of the air nomads with Gyatso at the front appeared before him. Thanks to Pothic's guidance, Aang was able to cope with the pain that Gyatso's death and the demise of the air nomads had given him and he was able to let go of it. Nevertheless, Gyatso's memory continued to live on through Aang, as the young air nomad would sometimes tell stories about his old teacher and friend, such as when he told a Fire Nation girl named Sho about a technique to divert his fears when being afraid or nervous by closing the eyes and thinking of one's favorite animal. Later, he would remember Gyatso's teachings and pass them on to his own students who became the first air acolytes and revive Yang Chen's festival with them. Gyatso was different from the other elders at the Southern Air Temple of the time, 
being more open-hearted and trying to keep things light instead of too serious, being a welcoming face around those living at the Air Temple. It's no wonder he was not only beloved by Aang, but also by the other students. Needless to mention, Gyatso also had a great sense of humor, an attribute Iroh would later attest to the Air Nomads. Just like his pupil, Gyatso knew how to have fun, even going so far as to play pranks on the other elders and cheating during games of Pai Shou. It's also known that he himself was not the most attentive student, preferring goofing off with his friend Roku instead, for example. Though he often played around, Gyatso was also a wise man, evidenced by the fact that he belonged to the Council of Elders and had been anointed as the Avatar's guardian. An empathetic man, he had the ability to bring a smile to Aang's face even when the latter felt depressed and under pressure, wanting to make the boy as comfortable as he could be, shielding him off from his destiny as the Avatar for as long as he could. Who's that? Monk Gyatso, the greatest airbender in the world. Gyatso was a man of many talents. Not only was he a master airbender, developing new airbending moves in his youth already, but he was also a great baker and could fly kites by just using the air. He was also a pie show player, even though he wasn't too shady not to cheat if the situation called for it, and when the opportunity to do so presented itself. He was a creative guy all around. We wouldn't be surprised if some of it rubbed off on his friend, who was maybe even more mischievous than his mentor. Gyatso first met Roku after the latter journeyed to the Southern Air Temple in order to learn airbending. The two shared a small but friendly rivalry with each other, each of them trying to outdo the other by using air gliders to race each other. Eventually, however, they became great friends even later in life. After Roku's death, Gyatso told Aang that he'd meet somebody who would help guide Aang in his journey as the Avatar, referring to the person as a he. Chances are likely that Gyatso meant his old childhood friend Roku. This would be fitting as it was Roku who told Aang that, some friendships are so strong they can even transcend lifetimes. Even though we don't know the exact circumstances about how these two legends met, Pothic regards Gyatso as a good friend of his, going far back over a hundred years ago. Perhaps these two shared a cup of onion and banana juice too? If there is one person that influenced Aang the most, it's probably Gyatso. Being almost like a father figure, the good-hearted monk was one of Aang's closest friends from his old life, and despite having been introduced rather briefly right at the beginning of the show, we could tell how much he meant to Aang. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Yamagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.